Greetings and welcome to In Depth. I'm DK Rasta. Now, we reached out to the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service for an update on things, and we're happy to be joined by meteorologist Gary Benjamin. We've had an event filled last week. Mr. Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing all right so far. I've been going through the bits of weather we had recently. Yes, sir. And with that in mind, though, take us through the TTMS color-coded warning system, because I know sometimes we hear, okay, well, it's this color, it's that color. But take us through what the system means. Thank you. Okay, the system is what is called a CAP-compliant hydrometeorological early warning system. CAP meaning Common Alerting Protocol. It is based on a matrix of certainty of occurrence and severity of impacts of the event. Uh, there are basically four colors. The first one is green. You have yellow, orange, and red. The green is usually used for cessation of events. Uh, the yellow is for moderate risk, orange high risk, and the red extremely high extreme high or very high risk and when you know, when we hear these colors so how much before an event or an event that is likely to happen do we get these alerts coming out of the service well on the in meteorology there are scales of weather in both um, space and time so that sometimes because of the small scale pattern of the weather, we, it, we may have the event coming up without much lead time, and other events may have much more lead times. But when we look at uh, weather phenomena, such as a tri tropical cyclone, uh, which are depression storms or hurricanes, flooding events, hazardous seas, climatic events, such as extreme uh, temperatures and rainfall events, if we look at them, as soon as we notice that they are going to pose a risk or a hazard in some way, then we would issue the early warning system would come into play and a cap according to the color of severity and certainty would be issued. So as I said, the green is for low risk, usually used in, um, in cessation of events, but that does not mean to say that you should not be aware of your surroundings. So you would be paying close attention to any warnings, any forecast coming out of the Met service at that time, and always having in mind that you should check the forecast almost daily, if not more than that. Uh, the yellow level would be moderate risk to public safety and livelihoods, property. Conditions may cause some disruptions in a few places, some potential for minor injuries, and most people would be able to go about their normal activities, but some would be directly Im impacted. So in a case like that, you have to have a heightened increased monitoring of your environment and stay tuned for all the updates coming out of the Met Service, the, the, the ODPM or the Regional Corporation's Disaster Management Unit. And when you go to orange level, it means then that you have a very high risk or a high risk to public safety, livelihoods and property and hazardous conditions may threaten the lives and livelihoods and properties. Uh, serious injuries or casualties could occur in a case like that. And um, you should be making preparations of continuing to make preparations to protect your life and property, your livelihood. And of course, when we go into the red, that means it is very extreme risk. By that time, if you're not prepared, you should be rushing to finalize your preparations and also to uh, evacuate if you have to, to be listening out for the management um, units, the emergency management units, to see how best you can follow their orders and continue with your evacuation to safety. And Mr. Benjamin, it seems as though, well, am I correct in saying that there's more than one assessment tool or one more than one uh, alert system? Because I think there was the incident possibly last week where there was yellow level, 
in terms of adverse weather, but there was also orange level in terms of riverine. So how do these two interact and engage with each other? Well, what had happened is that we had uh, an ongoing tropical wave, which the yellow level was for that weather, more of moderate risk. But we had um, also a riverine flooding alert, which had posed a higher risk and had put us into the orange as far as river lake green uh, flooding is concerned. Now the rain could stop, could have stopped falling, but the river rivers could have continued to be on the rise so that the, the risk for riverine flooding would have been much higher than the risk for the uh, severe weather. So you would have had the, the moderate risk, a yellow level for the um, severe weather, and you would have a, an orange level for the riverine flooding, which posed a high risk. And do you find more people following the pages that the Met Service has on offer now, Mr. Benjamin, in terms of Instagram, Facebook, I think there's Twitch as well, TT Met Service, if, and if I'm, if I'm not correct, correct me as to the hashtag of the service, please. Um, TT, TT Met Office.gov, metoffice.gov.tt, and um, we also suggest that they look at odpm.gov.tt. Now, yes, I have found that we have an increased awareness, but we want it to be even much more, because um, even if you're looking at other pages, the official source of information is out of the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Services, and the directives that you might find as far as moderate risk and risk and things like that will come officially from the Trinidad and Tobago Met Services. So please, even if you're looking at other pages, continue to be looking at Met Office pages. And um, yes, we are having increase in visibility, so to speak, and um, we hope that it continue and we could reach every single person in Trinidad and Tobago. And we have about one and a half minutes more in the, on this side of the conversation, Mr. Benjamin, but I remember someone saying that you wouldn't put stethoscopes on, on, on any person off the street and tell them, go operate on this person's heart. What are some of the reasons that makes the, the Met service, service, for want of a better word, stand above what other sources of information? Why are you directing us? Okay, well, this is the source of the information that you can bank on a little more. Well, we are under the aegis of the World Meteorological Organization. And um, we are qualified meteorologists, and we have to be qualified to be able to do the job of analyzing the weather and um, deciding on, on, on predictions with the weather and forecast, because that's the job of the meteorologist. We analyze the weather, we look at the past weather, we look at the present, what is happening, and we try to make a prediction of what is going to happen in the future. Now, people, um, others are merely weather reporters. So they look at different uh, meteorological offices. Some may look at the Miami office, and some may look at Trinidad and Tobago meteorologists, uh, meteorological service. But what happens is that most of the other reporters are weather reporters. So they look, they gather information, and they put a production out. But we are the people who are analyzing the weather and generating the reports and the data and the information. And even if you're looking at Miami in the world of uh, in the world under WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, you would find that there's always cooperation between Miami and ourselves. So a lot of the products that Miami would put out for our area would be because of cooperation with the meteorologists in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Now, I really appreciate the way that you would have said that. You know, you didn't beat your chest. You're just saying, well, this is what it is. We continue the conversation <laughs> with you, Mr. Mr. Benjamin, meteorologist of the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service, when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with meteorologist Gary Benjamin of the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service. And... Picking up on the point that you just that we just stopped on, Mr. Benjamin, in terms of creating those critically generated reports, what are some of the things that go into them? Because even I think even some of the fruit trees around the areas that I pass feel a little confused sometimes. Because one second is hot, hot sun, another moment is rain. 
So in terms of like generating those reports, where do you get that information from and how easy, is it easier or harder to look at some of those trends at this point in time? Well, in the first instance, we are in the tropical weather, which is very fickle and changes um, suddenly sometimes, so that we would be looking at the temperatures, the, the different instruments we have on temperatures, atm atmospheric pressures, the changes in the wind speed and direction. We'd be also looking at, at um, satellite imagery, which would give us a, an idea. Satellite imagery is mostly um, real time or, or 10 minutes after real time. So we're looking at satellite meteorology. It is it is the, the extent of the experience of the meteorologist that goes into using all these types of tools. We look at numerical models to see how the numerical models are playing them out in the future. But the experience and the skill of the meteorologist that would allow him with his training to put all this information together and decide what we are going to predict. On the smaller scales, the little thunderstorms that happen, it is normal in the, in the, in the rainy season to have thunderstorms popping up within half an hour, um, two hours. So the meteorologist with his experience would be looking at all these things and understanding the weather, having worked with the weather of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean and the region as a whole over a number of years. He would understand exactly what is going on. You have to have a certain type of skill because no matter all the tools you have, if you don't have the skill, then you cannot build properly on it. Now, I don't want to move from meteorology to climatology, but those trends, do you find them getting a little closer together uh, as opposed to some things that would have been over 20, 30 years? What, what, what are the trends looking like? Well, it is a fact that um, the, the globe has been warming. Um, the climatological trends, people talk about climate change. Yes, the climate is gradually warming and changing. And um, we looking at the trend, the trends is that is not so much the change over a, a paleoclimatological period, but is the rate of change that is really occurring that is of concern. Because you would understand that the human being over 100 years could have some type of adaptability to the climate if given the chance. But the rate of change in the short space of time is what is of concern. And we are noticing, yes, we may be getting some hotter temperatures and also some more uh, extreme um, cyclones. And um, what I have noticed is this year, we had three close calls within recent months, which passed as tropical waves or potential tropical cyclones straight across Trinidad and Tobago this year in the latitudes. So yes, the trends are changing. We have noticed it. And um, yes, we have to be prepared and be adapting to climate change. And in terms of that level of preparation, Mr. Benjamin, I know you said the weather can be fickle, but in terms of asking for an outlook as you see it thus far, where you sit from the service, what does the rest of the rainy season look like from, from the information that you have at this point in time? Okay, um, the rest of the wet season, of course, we have October, November, and December. Um, the, the hurricane season would finish in November, the end of November. Climatologically, that does not mean to say that we cannot have a system out of that time, but basically on the climatological timing at the end of November and the rainy season normally at the end of December. In October, it, it appears to be going very much above normal. The normal for Trinidad and Tobago is 206.9 millimeters and for Tobago is 169.9 millimeters. So far for Trinidad, we have had 159 millimeters, which is 77% of the normal rainfall, and we're still in the first couple of weeks of the month. Tobago's um, long term is 237.8 millimeters, and oh, they so far they have had. Sorry, Tobago's long term is 169.9 millimeters, and so far they have had 237.8 millimeters, which is 140% of the normal. Um, so that we are going above normal so far for November, for October, sorry. November is forecast to be very close to normal with 242 millimeters for Trinidad and Tobago and 218.3 for Tobago. Trinidad 242 and Tobago 218.3. And December is forecast 
also to be normal or just around normal at 151.7 millimeters for Trinidad and 124.3 for Tobago. Small rainfalls for the rest of the season except for October. But having said that is the rainy season. So when we say normal, it is going to be, we're going to have a few wet days and we can expect because of this late down in the season, we can expect some flooding, expect some flooding events. And because the land would be waterlogged also, the risk of um, landslips and landslides would be elevated. And with that, I want to go back to the point of you emphasizing the importance of monitoring these levels, especially monitoring the levels with information as disseminated by the Meteorological Service. Please, Mr. Benjamin. Okay, the, it, it is important because all of us live within the weather. There's no getting away from the atmosphere and the weather. And um, even if we don't put out a yellow level because we're looking at certain extents of the event that would, and severities that it may not take it into yellow as yet, one thunderstorm over your house or your village could cause a bit of flooding and put you at risk, even if we're in the green. So you have to continue monitoring the weather and continue to inform the, the management units if you're in any type of danger. You may be living close to a river, a stream, and you notice the stream is increasing in, in water content. And, and um, some people may ask, what is the Met Office doing? We're not seeing any yellow level or anything like that as yet. The onus is on you at this time to look at what is happening within your immediate environment on the smaller scale to see what is happening with you and how much risk you are in and to inform the necessary authorities. Because as I said, one thunderstorm over a village could put the villagers in danger and the rest of Trinidad and Tobago could be in some fairer weather or even sunshine. And finally, in terms of the advice to citizens, which um, and which which you just gave some, uh, do do does the Met Service put out information for specific areas? So if okay, well, can I go to the, the Met Service and say, well, yes, there's a thunderstorm over this village, my village, versus something that is a little more general? Well, because of the the, the short scale time frame of thunderstorm activity, it could pop up so sudden that um, unfinished so suddenly that by the time you see the thunderstorm occurring and you put out something, then next thing you know, it's already done the damage it has to do. So what we could do is say that in certain areas, there's a greater likelihood of the thunderstorms occurring if it's just thunderstorms. For bigger phenomena such as tropical waves and um, the ITCC and probably cyclones, you would be able to see that the size of them would cover most of Trinidad and Tobago. But as we get back to the lower scale ones that would have appeared quickly and in small spaces, relatively small spaces, then we have to be saying things in the forecast like over hilly areas, um, to Western districts, but not confined to, or in mostly Tobago, mostly Trinidad, South Trinidad or North Trinidad and the scales like that. But to bring it down to the village level, it would be very difficult because the thunderstorm, while moving fast, while developing fast, is moving also. So that um, and also it could be creating other thunderstorms around it. So we give the warning for thunderstorms occurring, so that we could understand the person, whoever it is listening to the forecast, could understand where there is a possibility that a thunderstorm could occur. And I know you said that um, that real-time information can also have a window of 10 minutes. So in that 10 minutes, this the, this phenomenon could do we do and go away. But we want to thank you very much for that, meteorologist Gary Benjamin of the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Roster. Thank you so much for joining us.